in the last 30 days, I've reached more than 4 million people on LinkedIn with my content. Here are the five steps on how the LinkedIn algorithm works and how to seduce it. Step one, filtering. When you post something on LinkedIn, the algorithm will decide if your post is part of one of the three following categories, spam, low quality, or clear. Typically, company posts that are usually promoted on LinkedIn fell into kind of the spammy category. No one really enjoys seeing ads and the engagement on those posts are usually super low. The second section is usually low quality posts. Those posts are not super readable. As you can see in here, they also add links to external platforms. The goal of any post on LinkedIn is for people to spend time on the post, but we will get back to that in a minute. The best content is put in the third category, the clear one. It means that the post is very easily understandable, easy to read, and easy for people to engage and comment. For example, here, Danco started his post with how to get ahead of 99% of people. The hook here on the post is very intriguing, which pushes the audience to actually look down at the post and read what's next. The post is also super actionable, so people can directly relate to it and jump in the comments. As you can see, in just two hours, is getting thousands of likes and hundreds of comments. So how exactly does the LinkedIn algorithm know in which category it's gonna put you? Step two, interaction. That's how LinkedIn knows in which category they're gonna put you. To decide in which category you should be, the LinkedIn algorithm is gonna look at how many interactions a post gets. The more comments, the better. And the reason why is pretty simple. LinkedIn wants people to spend time on the platform. So if comments are long, it means that people are spending time on the platform writing and interacting with your post because they want to make a point or add something to the conversation. As any social network, the goal of LinkedIn is for people to interact as much as possible because the more they interact together, the more money they can make. The more time people spend on the platform, the easier it is for them to sell more ads. Another tip for you to get a bit more interaction is to actually tag relevant people on your post. But be careful because if you tag people and they don't reply, your post and the reach will be penalized. The third step is the dwell time. The more time you spend on a post, the higher the reach will be. It follows exactly the same logic as the interactions mentioned before in step two. So how exactly do you maximize your dwell time? Well, you want people to click on that see more button. The more people click on the see more button, the more people are interested in knowing what your post is about. That's why your first sentence matter the most. It has to hook the reader so they are interested in reading what's next. For example, this is a really good hook from Roxana. She starts with a situation in 2021 versus another situation in 2022. We see directly on the post that there is a huge change and we're wondering what changed, which forces us to actually click on the see more button so we can see the full post. This will increase the dwell time, enhance the engagement and reach of your post. Just so you know, clicking on see more has the same impact as someone giving you a like. So make sure to work on your hooks. Step four is about profile indexing. Meaning when people are searching on LinkedIn for people, do they find you well or is your profile well indexed for a specific set of keywords? The reasoning behind it is that LinkedIn wants to connect people with each other. And to do so, they need to understand what do you specialize about. So let's take a very simple example. If people are searching for entrepreneurs to follow and you are an entrepreneur creating a lot of content around entrepreneurship, your profile should be optimized around those keywords. Because the easier it gets for people to follow you, the easier it is for LinkedIn to link you to a specific kind of topic. So basically, LinkedIn wants to understand who you are and why you here on the platform. If you focus on a specific kind of content, LinkedIn will be able to push your content to people who are relevant and interested in what you're producing. That's why focusing on a specific niche and indexing your profile the right way will help you get even more rich. And the step five is your SSI or social selling index. Basically, it's your swag on LinkedIn or how cool you are. Let's go and see my SSI. I'm a bit stressed. Get your score for free. Yay. All right. So I'm in the top 2% of my, uh, my industry. That's impressive. Fuck you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>
So basically, the social selling index is kind of giving you your ranking within your network, but also within your industry. The social selling index represents how important you are for LinkedIn on the platform. Meaning that the more interaction you have with other people, the more value you bring and the more people engage with your content, the higher your SSI will be. Down the line, the SSI correlate directly with your behavior on the platform. If you engage a lot with other people in your industry, if you write really high quality content, if you interact by direct messages with others and build your network, your SSI will keep growing. So if you have like a really high SSI and are part of the top 10%, LinkedIn will dramatically push your content because they want to reward you for being such a cool user on their platform. Feel free to let me know in the comments your SSI. That way I can help you improve it. Talk soon.